Amen. Um, the book of James uh, records these words. Is there anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is there anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is there anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Uh, had uh, two folks to come uh, and approach me before, even before Sunday school, and um, they want to put into practice what we know to be true in the Word of God. So uh, Cindy and Mia uh, want us to pray specifically over their eyes. Uh, they're having eye problems with their eyes. So if you come up here and get next to Sandra and uh, little Nova uh, in the nursery, her eyes have, have changed and uh, uh, they're going to bring her over. And so I want to uh, call for the elders of the church um, to come and pray. But uh, also, I'd like to extend this invitation to you. If you're here and you're sick in your body and you believe that, uh, uh, that the Lord's able to heal and you want us to anoint you, I would be more than happy to anoint you and uh, call for the elders of the church and they will pray over you as well. So God is able. There is nothing impossible for God. Amen? Uh, you don't have to be a member of this church for us to do that. So uh, uh, member, visitor, whatever, if you are uh, in need of a healing of any kind, God is able. There is nothing uh, that God is not able to accomplish. I believe that. Anyone else need us to anoint? I wanted to do this before the service because we have children this is the first time I can remember in a long time that we've had children that says, I believe he's able. Now, you want to get old, old Baptist church, uh, preacher stirred up, uh, you, you let a kid say something like that. Uh, Marlene's coming. Okay. Marlene, if you want to come around. Uh, okay. Oh, man, we got a... We got a Beautiful. Uh, anyone else? All right. Praise God. They keep on coming. While, while uh, this sister is coming, I, I I'll let you know. Uh, God is on the move here. He's up to something. Uh, we had a a 40-year-old guy get saved yesterday at our men's breakfast. And uh, uh, he's wanting to do something this morning. I woke up, and he was stirring my spirit this morning. And I know he's going to do something. And uh, I, I don't know what, because I'm not God. But if you'll let go and let him, you'll walk out of here, and you'll be closer to him than what you were when you got here. If you're here and you're not a Christian, there is no better place on earth that I know to be because the power and the presence of God is here. And he wants to save you. He wants you to be a part of his family. If you're here and you're sick, he wants you well more than you do. Anybody else? All right, this time I'd like to call for the elders of the church to come, and which includes every person that is a faithful believer that believes in the power of prayer and power of God. You can come and uh, you touch somebody that we're going to anoint or touch somebody that's touching them. Okay? I anoint you, my dear sister, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is able. Amen. Y'all going to have to let me anoint first before we start praying. I anoint you, dear sister. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Let me 
you sneak in here, King. I anoint you, my dear sister. In the name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I anoint you, my dear sister, in the name of Jesus Christ. I anoint you, little one, in the name of our Lord and Savior. All right. Father, I thank you and praise you, honor and glorify you because your word is true. What you say, you will do. And Lord, we lift all of these up unto you this morning. God, you know the need of each and every one. You are the great physician. You are the great healer. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. God, we just call upon you to work in their lives what's needed to be done. We thank you that you, you told us, you commanded us to pray, your will be done. So we do that over each and every one of these. We praise you, we thank you, we honor and we glorify your name, Jesus. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. What? You did what? You give? I don't have none right now, buddy. No, sir, you can't go in there without me. <clears throat> All right, Children's Church. Whoever's doing Children's Church. Church, we got a, got several, so. Amen. I don't know what they are. Four to adult. We don't check IDs, so. God is good. Anybody have a word? Don't be silent on me. Turn with me in your Bibles to uh, the 26th chapter of the book of St. Matthew. If you don't have anything, I've got a plenty. Do you... Amen. He's telling all of us. Amen. Well, we've got all the tools necessary to offer you for that. Amen. We need to step out in obedience. I think he's calling all of us into that, sis. If we're to be honest. You know somebody's talking about you. Did you? Would it come to a shock? Would it be a shock to you? For you to find out there's somebody talking about you? We're, none of us are so naive to know that, right? That there's not somebody talking about us. Your name's on the lips of somebody. Maybe many. Whether it be for good or be for bad, somebody's talking about you. Y'all agree? Uh, Tommy, I'm glad you're here, son. Because you're leading the charge in the amen department. So looks like it's going to be 50 bucks a piece this morning. But somebody is talking about you. Whether it be for good or for bad. So church... Of the living God, Emmanuel Baptist Church, my brothers, my sisters, let's give them something to talk about. Amen? And not bad. You know, I should have specified that because some of you might be thinking about that Snickers bar that you can't afford that you're going to sneak down to Walmart and snag. But let's give them something good to talk about. 
I've been rejoicing over Jimmy Clages, 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 uh, ever since the breakfast. Forty-year-old man. Man, it's awesome. If you want to give heaven something to talk about, if you're not a Christian, do you know the Bible says that heaven erupts in celebration over one sinner that comes to repentance, over the 99 that doesn't need that? Amen? So if you want to give heaven something to celebrate, if you're not a Christian, you give your life to him, and according to the Bible, according to the words of Jesus Christ himself, Heaven erupts in celebration. And he should know because he, he's been sitting up there for the ages and he's seen many of a celebration. Amen? Uh, Matthew 26, 1 through 13. Please stand to your feet. We'll honor the reading of God's word. Got a very simple message I want to bring to you on let's give them something to talk about. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished all those sayings, that's uh, the Olivet Discourse, uh, that he said to the disciples, you know that after two days is the Passover and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and they plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Jesus was, it was in Bethany, which is just a short distance from Jerusalem, at the house of Simon the leper. A woman came to him, uh, having an alabaster uh, flask of very uh, costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why was this waste? For this fragrant oil may have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a good work in me. For, the poor, uh, for you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Pray with me. Father, thank you for the infallible, inerrant word of God. I thank you, Lord that you give us opportunity day in and day out to do for you what you'd have us to do. Help us to step out in faithful obedience and be willing to accomplish what you would have for us in our life. Every one of us has a story, and I pray that we will complete it well, that one day when we look into your eyes, you'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. I praise you and thank you that we have this privilege and this opportunity to do so. We love you, Lord, and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. In this text, we see one of Jesus' followers uh, move in faithful obedience out of worship to him and sacrifice a great deal just to be talked about by who? Not the enemies of Christ. If we look at this text very closely, it's not the enemies of Jesus that's doing the wrong talking, but by the ones that are following him the closest. The disciples rose up, and they started to criticize this lady that stepped out in faithful obedience. If you look at the Gospel of Mark, it said they sharply criticized her. In other words, they scolded her. For stepping out in faithful obedience to what the Holy Spirit was telling her to do. How often do we find ourselves on the wrong side of the ship when it comes out uh, when it comes to something like this? Have you ever been on the wrong side of the boat 
uh, when it comes to being critical over somebody that's doing what they should have been doing all along. Amen? Uh, maybe you're here this morning and you're critical because we took time and anointed uh, these people. Oh, we, should, we need to get out of here at a certain time. Well, you're in the wrong place, honey. Uh, uh, we we're, we're don't have a time schedule here. Now, we try to be mindful because some old preacher told me a long time ago, the mind can calmly comprehend what the rear end can handle. So we, we try not to be here forever, but we do want to be obedient to what God would have us to, to be. Amen? Uh, so anyhow, uh, I've been on the wrong side of the ship and tried to be critical over somebody doing what they were called to do. The disciples found themselves on the wrong side of the ship. However, just like Mary, we as individuals in the body of Christ need to keep our eyes focused upon Jesus and our ears alert to the voice of Holy Spirit so that we may, may be more like Mary and less like those complainers. This will take courage on our part. Amen? Three things that I want to share with you about when it comes to faithful obedience in Christ. Amen? Three things I want to share with you about in being faithful, obedient servants, faithful, obedient children in the kingdom of God. Amen? Yep. And uh, I, I believe you'll bless your socks off, so I hope you washed your feet. First of all, faithful obedience... Uh, and the, main, the key word starts with the letter A. Faithful obedience almost never makes human sense. Faithful obedience almost never makes sense to us in the flesh. Almost never. Scripture is silent, so we really don't know if Mary even knew what she was doing for the cause of Christ. Holy Spirit said, Mary, go to the cupboard, grab what you saved an entire year for, and I want you to go and break the flask and pour this over Jesus. This is what I want you to do. I don't want you to say nothing. I just want you to go in there, and this is the task, the duty I want you to perform. Guess what Mary did? She went and grabbed that bottle. She broke it open. She poured it over Jesus. Now, why did this not make any sense? Why did it not make any sense? Well, this fragrant oil that was saved up and purchased for was purchased for the dead, not the living. It wasn't aftershave. It wasn't cologne. It was something that was used to anoint a body once it had been buried or prepare that body for burial. It's never meant for a live person. It wasn't. So, number one, it was very costly. The Bible says it took her almost a year if she made uh, normal wages to save up for this. Number two, Jesus was still living. He was at eat, actually eating supper with Simon the leper when the Holy Spirit says, this is what I want you to do. Now, how many of us would have said, okay? <laughs> or how many of us would have went, well, wait a minute, Holy Spirit. He's not dead, and this cost me way too much money. Can I not go, by to, go to the Dollar Tree and... Buy something else, and uh, because this is, you know, this is for church stuff. The, the, it ain't for the more important stuff, like going to a ball game or going here or there or whatever. I mean, it called, it was very costly, and it didn't make any sense to anoint a live person. I don't know if it ever got done, but it did on this occasion. Amen. When Holy Spirit moves upon you. The flesh will rise up and say, wait a minute, wait, 
we, we need to talk about this because it's going to cost you something. And just to let you know, there's going to be some people talking about you. People are going to talk about you if you do that. Right? Yeah. Some of you, I believe really that some of you had a testimony this morning and you didn't share. And probably one of the reasons is because you're afraid somebody's going to talk about you. So when the altar call's given, some people will stand like a statue whenever they know that Holy Spirit's going, hey, come on up here, let's talk about this. Come now, let's, says the Lord and in, in, in Isaiah, let us reason together. That's what God is saying. But some people are, are afraid or perhaps ashamed to, to come forward at, at an altar call because they're afraid somebody's going to talk about them. And you know they will. There, there's some stiff-necked uh, religious person that's going to say, well, so-and-so comes up every single week. Well, if you're that person that's complaining about so-and-so praying, you should be the first one here. Because whatever they're praying about is absolutely none of your business. It's none of my business. It's between them and heaven. <laughs> and he cares. And he answers. When the altar call is given, honestly, I probably should be the first one there. But I'm the one giving the invitation, so most of the time uh, it fails me to be able to do that. So God knows you a whole lot better than you even know yourself. And he says, hey, come up here. He might be wanting you just to pray for somebody else. How do you know? Amen? Almost never makes any sense. And the flesh is going to be in opposition. And the worldly Christian is going to be opposing. But the only person I care about is the one that died for me. That's all Mary cared about. Was the one that was going to pay the price for her. Amen. It almost never makes any sense. Uh, uh, this, verses 6 and 7. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask a very costly fragrant oil. Uh, it's hard to read and cry with contacts in at the same time. <laughs> and she poured it on his head and he sat at the table. Uh, again, she came to a living person with burial oil and poured it on him. It made no sense. Faithful obedience unto the Lord often makes little or no sense to us. In Scripture, time after time, we see the plan of God unfold that leaves us shaking our heads in, how did God do this or that? The way he chooses to do things is simply mind-blowing. Take, for example, God intentionally, there was no accident, God intentionally led the children of Israel from Egypt to the Red Sea. On the way to the promised land, God could have given them any other kind of GPS coordinates to get from point A to point B, but he says, this is the direction I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you straight headlong to the Red Sea. And by the time you get out of Egypt, they're going to be mad because they, lay, uh, they lost their slave population and they're going to be coming hot on your heels. But in case you forgot how big I am through those ten, command, you know, those ten plagues that I wrought in Egypt, I've got another one up my sleeve I want to share with you. I want to take you to the Red Sea and there's going to be no way of escape. The Egyptians are going to be coming hot on your heels. And whenever you pray, I got something I want to show you. I'm not just the God over whatever you think. I'm over the God that over what you may not think. Red Sea in front of them. Hills on each side. Pharaoh coming up behind them. They started crying out to God. And what does God do? 
Yeah, maybe somebody here needs the Red Sea parted for them in one way, shape, or form. Amen? God is able. He's intentionally brought you where you are this very day, this very moment, to show up and say, hey, let me show you a thing or two about who I really am. Amen? Did it make any sense? Would it have made any sense to Moses for him to lead them straight to the Red Sea with no way out? Didn't make any human sense, right? But God went, the sea went this way. A few million Jewish people marched across the sea on dry ground. Amen? Then the enemy tried to pursue them, and God went, and she closed right on them. Amen? Yeah, y'all heard the story of the, the atheist teacher standing in front of her classroom and said, even if that story was true, where they crossed it probably wasn't over knee deep. The water probably wasn't over knee deep. Little Sally raises her hand and she says, Teacher, I've got something to say about that. She says, Okay, Sally, what is it? Well, if the water was only knee deep, how come the Egyptians drowned? Amen? What God does doesn't make a lot of human sense. Once Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land, I'm skipping a miracle of the crossing of the, the Jordan River, but the conquest of Jericho was, never did not make any sense to a military genius like Joshua. God could have come up with some kind of elaborate battle plan for them to use their military might against Jericho. But God says, I don't want you to do it that way. You remember crossing the Red Sea and just a few days ago crossing the Jordan River? I am also a military genius. Let me tell you how I want you to, to defeat the city of Jericho. For seven days... I want you to do something. Now, ladies, I hate to tell you, but there probably wasn't any ladies in the group because they had to be quiet. <laughs> and I knew I'd get that. But when Brother Mike made the announcement on the Thursday night uh, thing where the ladies meet, the men meet once a month. Ours is over with within an hour. The ladies, and they don't even eat. They meet on Thursdays, and sometimes three hours or three and a half hours, Sandra comes rolling in. I don't have a frown on my face. Not at all. Other than I've had to let the dogs in 50 times. But the battle plan for the city of Jericho is first day march around at one time blow the trumpets let them know you're here let them know I'm here second day the same way up to the seventh day the seventh day do what march around it and he says be quiet don't say a word until I give you the signal number one what made no sense was the God's battle plan number two what didn't make any sense is God told them to shout before the walls came down. Not after the victory, but before the victory. Right? Before the first person was taken in the city of Jericho, God said, I want you to trust me and shout. Amen? How many people's going to uh, heaven and is heaven bound with a hammer down? Amen? And they have this, well, preacher, when I get there, I'm going to shout. Well, God says for us to shout now. Amen? Amen. Like we're already going to be there. Amen. Need mental note, talk more about heaven. <laughs> uh, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, the Bible says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor, my ways, or, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts, uh, your thoughts. The list goes on and on and on 
on how God draws up his plans for our lives, and they all require faithful obedience. Amen? It, they all require an act of faith. Amen? The act of faith for a lost person is saying what you already know. God brings salvation from your head to your heart, and that way you're saved. Amen? Once you speak what God says, God moves salvation from the head to the heart. Amen? You have to believe up here before it can get in here. And whenever you speak it, then God transfers faith from the head to the heart. Amen? I get so many bobbleheads every week whenever I'm preaching the Word of God. Y'all believe that, don't you? This right here. Do you know when faith takes place? When faith, faith takes place, whenever it moves not only to hear, Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Faith takes place whenever what you know here moves into here and comes out here and here. Amen? It's not faith until we start moving and acting on what we know to be true. And it takes courage because it doesn't make any sense. Amen? So whatever God's uh, calling you to do, it's probably not going to make a whole lot of sense to you. But if you step out in faithful obedience, God has promised to bless that. And He will bless that. Amen? The greatest act of faithful obedience made no human sense. It was the... A uh, matter of fact, it was the course of the darling Son of God giving His life for us. The innocent for the guilty. The sinless for the sinner. So that we may be saved. Listen to what the prayer was in the Garden of Gethsemane later on in the 26th chapter. Jesus went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Then he closed out his prayer, Nevertheless, not, uh, not as I will, but as you will. Faithful obedience. Again, the second time in verse 42, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. The greatest act of faithful obedience came from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we want to be more like him, then we need to step out in faithful obedience. Amen? It'll almost never make sense. Second of all, faithful obedience will anger some. They, they may not just sort of disagree with it. They will get angry at your, at your obedience to the Lord. And one of the reasons is because it don't make any sense to them. And if it doesn't make any sense to them, then how, how am I going to support you if it doesn't make any sense? If it don't go against the word of God, honey, I'll support you. Amen? You come to me with your visions and your dreams, and I'll support you if you can back it up with the precious, infallible, inerrant Word of God. Amen? Amen. Faithful obedience will anger some. People will get mad whenever you step out in faith. Amen? I, I had, a, had a dear brother one time. I, I thought he enjoyed the service. I mean, he'd come, he'd sit, and he'd grin, and it, he might even say it amen once in a while. And later on, a few years later, he'd come up and he said, you know what? I need to tell you something. I was mad at you about every single service for a long time. Finally, I got right with God, and I'm not mad at you no more. Amen? Faithful obedience will make some people angry. Because it don't make any sense. There will be opposition, and sometimes the opposition will come from those who are supposedly on the same side that you're on. Now, Mary of Bethany and the disciples were supposed to be on the same team, right? They were all followers of Christ. But the disciples got their eyes off of Jesus 
got their eyes on something else and started listening to somebody else. And we'll cover that here in a second. So listen, just because it doesn't make sense to you, if you can't prove it wrong here, you probably should keep your mouth shut. Amen? And then be on your knees for that person. Amen? And then let God reveal it to them. I mean, I, I've missed the boat a time or two. I have. There's been a few times that I've thought one way and it should have been going, You ever? any of y'all ever done that? So, Whenever somebody comes and they start sharing their visions and their dreams and things with you, I mean, the first thing we should do is be on our knees and praying. Now, if it's absolutely against the will of God and it's written in the Word, then, then we should share with them. Amen? But if it's, if it's not in opposition to the Word of God, the first thing we should do is get them by the hand and pray with them. Pray for them that God will come alongside them and bless them. Uh, verses 6 through 9, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came having an alabaster uh, flask of very co uh, costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on the head uh, as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, not the scribes and the Pharisees, but the disciples, some of your, uh, our fellow church people may get angry at your faithful obedience they were indignant in other words and in, in, in mark's gospel like i shared a minute ago they sharply criticized her they were indignant saying why is this waste you're wasting this is anything we do for jesus a waste your money's never a waste your time's not a waste amen uh, god's able to multiply your time if that's an Something Satan, excuse Satan's giving you. For this fragrant oil may have been sold for much and given to the poor. There you have it. There was their, their complaint against Mary. We need to be very careful when we are listening to the voices because some will come from those careful, cleverly disguised as your friends and fellow believers that may cause us to be influenced the wrong way. As in this text, we can see who's leading the charge down the wrong path that led to the persecution of Mary. Jer John goes a little deeper than what Matthew did concerning this text. In this situation, God wanted to let us know why Jesus' disciples became indignant or angry at Mary. Now, if we just read Matthew's account, we're going, I, maybe I can see why you were a little dissatisfied with her, but you were sharply angry. Indignant shows rage against her. They were really mad. They weren't just casually mad. They were really mad that Mary did this because it didn't make any sense to them. Jesus is still alive. They didn't really know he was going to be crucified even though he had told them over and over and that he would raise again. But do you know where, who was leading the charge of the disciples? And we need to be careful on who we're listening to. Amen. The, the biggest opposition in the church is not lost people for the most part. It's that backslidden, cold and indifferent person. Amen. In this case, it was a lost person that was disguised as a disciple of Jesus. Because Jesus said, did I not choose you twelve? One of you is a devil. Right? So there's only 11 out of the 12 that's even saved to start with. And the one that wasn't saved was chirping the loudest. So the rest of them jumped on board with Judas. And they said this. Then one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son who would betray him, said, Why is this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Thus he said, listen to verse 6, Not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. 
Wow. John says the reason that Judas was mad is he was hoping that she would have donated it, he would have slipped out and sold it, and he would have had some money to run on. And him chirping so loud caused the other disciples to get stirred up. So the whole crowd was against Mary for doing what Holy Spirit said for Mary to do. Amen? So be careful at who you listen to. Amen? Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Amen? Those are commands given to us by our, the Lord Jesus, or, uh, by, the, by the Word of God, is to be quick to hear, slow to speak. The disciples were quick to speak and slow to hear. How many of us are in that boat once in a while? Should we be careful? Amen? Not give an immediate answer? Some of you have in, have come up to me and asked me questions and uh, you think I've blown you off uh, when that's not the case because I'll come to you later. Just because I don't give you an answer really quick doesn't mean I'm not listening to what you have to say. It means, wait a minute, I'm going to think and pray on it before I try to give you any instruction one way or another. Because I don't want to be like Judas and leave you, lead you down the wrong path. Amen? And we should love one another enough that we should uh, be quick to hear and slow to speak when it concerns important things. Amen? The things of God. We will encounter opposition when doing the work of Christ. Y'all agree with that? Are you prepared for that? Amen? You should be. We should know that there's going to be opposition. When we're doing his work, it tears down the enemy's plans. Amen? His plans for you to stand up or sit down, keep your mouth shut, come to church just enough to satisfy your flesh and say, hey, I went to church today. When Jesus says, come to church with holy hands raised, and praise my name, and love on each other, and get more prepared for the kingdom of heaven. Amen? That's what Jesus says. Satan says, okay, you're at church. Now just be quiet. Don't listen to anything. Get out of here as quick as you can, and it'll be okay. Endure it for a while. When God says, I want you to enjoy it. Amen. We should be enjoying this thing. Amen? Listen to this, and then I'll move on to the last point. The majority is seldom the right voice. The majority is seldom the right voice. Amen? Yeah. Last of all, you can smile now. Or you can say, wait a minute, I better wait till he gets further into it before I smile. Faithful obedience will be announced by the king himself. He's the one that gives the reward. Amen? We're, we shouldn't be in it for man's accolades anyhow. If the king is pleased, that should be all that matters. Amen? In this very text, who was pleased? Jesus was pleased. Praise God. Amen. We have, the, we have the wonderful privilege of pleasing our Savior and our King. Amen. And He's quick. He is a rewarder of those that follow in faithful obedience unto Him. And it's Him that will wrap His arms around you and say, well done. I'm proud of you. My son, my daughter, I am pleased with you. Amen? The king will announce to you his great pleasure. Even if everybody else turns their back, it would be enough. 
Amen? God keeps careful record of our obedience, and He is personally the rewarder of those who steps out in faithful obedience. Wow. Matthew 26, 10 through 13. But when Jesus was aware of it, in other words, whenever he was aware of their criticism, he said to them, Jesus did two things. He stopped the mouths of the critics, and then he praised his faithful servant. Amen? Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For, in pour, uh, for pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Jesus said, they're still going to be talking about her years and years and years and years from now because she did the right thing. Amen? Amen. Proverbs eleven eighteen: 18, the wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. Proverbs 25, 21, and 22, if your enemy is hungry... Give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. In other words, you'll be playing with their conscience because why on earth are they doing good to me that's been bad to them? Isaiah 62, 11. Indeed, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the world, say to the daughter of Zion, surely your salvation is coming. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to their works. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, whatever means, means everything. Do it heartily. Ever miss out on your reward because we do things less than heartily? Whatever you do, it doesn't mean just church stuff. Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord. And not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord's Christ. Jesus himself is going to reward those. It's going to be announced by the king whenever we stay up out in faithful obedience to him. Takeaways from today's sermon. As a body of believers... We need to make sure that we're watching and listening for the move of God in our lives. And then be obedient followers of Him. This will require us to be filled by Holy Spirit. Filled by Him. And led by Him. Amen? How much effort can you give if you're only a fourth of the way filled by Him? Halfway, three-fourths of the way. I want to be filled. God wants to fill you so much that you're running over on the next person and then the next. Like we had during the early part of the service. Amen. Tommy talking about all the hands raised. I, I, I try not to be nosy because it's none of my business what you're doing in your worship. But I can tell you, Jesus said for us to lift holy hands. I'm just, just saying. And you can't praise with your mouth shut. I'm just giving you a couple of whatevers. We need to be filled by Holy Spirit, number one. And then we need to be led by Holy Spirit, number two. Yeah. Filling is for you. Leading is for somebody else. Right? Because you never know. You never know what God wants you to do to bless somebody else. The rewards of that are truly unimaginable. 
not only for us, but to those we are sent to minister to. I come to eat a bite of breakfast and share in a devotion yesterday. I didn't know when I left the house that I'd be sitting across my desk from somebody that was wanting to give their heart to Jesus. The greatest joy I've ever had other than me getting saved myself was telling somebody else about my best friend and letting them receive him their self. Ephesians 5, 17 through 20. Therefore do not be unwise. Don't go through this not knowing. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18. Don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation. Drunkenness is a sin. Verse 18 is in the same, or the half part, uh, half of this verse is in the, is, is, uh, connected to this. He says, don't be drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. It's just as much of a sin for us to not be filled than it is to be drunk. So how many people want to be filled with the Holy Spirit this morning? Amen? Now we have Him in us, but to be filled with us, but be, be filled with Him is to be is different. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful obedience. Almost never makes any sense. Probably going to make some people mad. But it's going to be announced for you by the King. Amen. You want to be obedient? We should be always wanting to be obedient. Is God calling you into doing something for him? May I encourage you this morning to step out in faithful obedience and he'll reward you. Amen. Even if it's not making any sense to you. Please stand to your feet. Father, thank you. Uh, worship team, come on. Uh, Father, thank you for the time we've got to spend together. And uh, I, I, I truly believe with all my heart, there's that your your hand is upon some. You're calling them, and it's something that that they've been thinking about that just doesn't make any sense right now. But Father, I pray that you through this message that you have revealed to them that your plan doesn't make sense. If you are for us, praise God, no one can be against us, because greater is you that lives in us than he that's in the world. Give us the courage to be obedient to you this morning. Uh, be, give us the courage to be filled with your Holy Spirit and to be led by you as we go in and out among other people and minister to each other. Help us, Lord, to be pleasing in your sight like Mary was. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.